let g be a finite non-empty set with multiplication. So g has a binary operation with values in g itself. We'll suppose that the multiplication is associative and that it has cancellation laws. So if I have ax equal to ay, we can cancel the a's and we're left with x equals y. Similar statement holds if the a is on the right hand side. With that, we want to show that g is a group. Now, to show that g is a group, we have to show four properties. First, that g is closed under multiplication. By definition, our binary operation has values in g itself, so we get that for free. We want the multiplication to be associative. And again, we get that for free as an assumption. We want to find an identity element E, such that if we take any x and g, we have the x times e equals e times x equals x itself. And then finally, we want closure under inversion. So for any x and g, there's going to be another element, x inverse, such that x inverse times x equals x times x inverse is equal to our identity element E. Before we get to the proof, let's state what we're given, what we're trying to show. We have that G is finite, the multiplication is associative, and the multiplication has cancellation laws. What we're trying to show, we want an identity element E and G, then once we have that, we want to find an inverse for each element of G. Now, we have to get that from our three assumptions. So what's our strategy? Well, we're going to take any element A and G, start raising it to powers. Because G is finite, the set of all powers of A is also finite, which means some power of A is equal to another power of A. Then we can use the cancellation law to bring the exponents down to something useful. For the associative property, well, we want this as one of our group properties, but it'll also be useful because whenever I take a product of three or more elements, we can leave out the parentheses. Our first step, we want to show for each A that there's an identity element E sub A. So we're not looking for the identity of the group yet. We're just looking for an E sub A such that E sub A times A, in either order, just gives us A back. Now, to get E sub A, what we'll do is we we'll take A and then just start raising the powers. Since this subset of G is finite, that means there's going to be exponents K and L not equal to each other, such that A of the K equals A of the L. And then I can use the cancellation law to bring the exponents down one at a time. So we could do that until I have some A to the I plus 1 is equal to A. Now, We'll call e sub a equal to a of the i. And then you'll note, if we multiply by a on either side, we just get a to the i plus 1. And then by assumption, that's going to be equal to a. So that gets me my identity element for a itself. For step two, find the identity of g itself. Now, I'll start with a and b and g. We take the product. Then we'll multiply on the left by e sub a b and e sub a. By definition of the identity for AB, E sub AB times AB is just AB itself. We multiply on the left by E sub A. Well, I can group E sub A with A. By definition, we get back A, and then again we get A times B. So these two items are equal. We use the cancellation law on the right to get rid of AB. So we get E sub AB equals E sub A. We can repeat that procedure on the other side. We replace E sub A with E sub B. That'll get us the E sub A B is equal to E sub B. So we have for all A and B, E sub A is equal to E sub B. I call that element E the identity for G itself. Note, I've had to use both cancellation laws in our proof. For our third step, we want inverses. So we fix an A, then by step one, we have there's going to be a positive I 
such that a to the i plus one is equal to a. I break it into two cases. Since we don't know what a to the zero means, we only took a to the one or higher powers. Now, if a equals one, I have a times a equals a. a is equal to a times e. So I can use the cancellation law to remove the a in the front. That gives me a equals e. And then we have the a is its own inverse, because e times e is equal to e. Now, if i is strictly bigger than 1, we'll call a inverse equal to a to the i minus 1. And this exponent is 1 or larger. Now, let's take a look. So I have the a to the i plus 1 is equal to a. So I'm going to rewrite that as a to the i times a equals e times a. Cancel an a on the right. That gives me a to the i is equal to e. Now you'll note a to the i minus 1 times a equals a times a to the i minus 1 is equal to e. So if we call this a inverse, it's going to satisfy exactly what we want. So that shows that our g is a group.